In the 10th century, a new threat for the European kingdoms came from the east, the Magyars. More commonly known today as the Hungarians, at the time they were just yet another nomadic people that came pillaging from the east. Surprisingly though, they were the last ones to settle in the Pannonian Basin and had a big role in shaping the region in what we know it as today. In my series Unspoke AD, they also play their part. So what are the origins of these people? And why did they invade Central Europe in the 10th century at all? Let's find out in this video. Pillaging warrior hordes were nothing new to the European people of the 10th century. The inhabitants along the coast lived in constant fear of the Vikings from Scandinavia, while the people in southern Europe feared Arab and Berber raiding parties, and still tales were told of the brutal Huns from centuries ago. The new and most feared threat though were the Magyars, a nomadic horse people from the east. Little is known today of the origins of these people, and what exists in recorded history was only written centuries later when the Magyars were already Christianized and settled where they still live today in the modern state of Hungary. Modern historians generally agree on the origins of the Magyar people based on their language. Hungarian is a Finno-Ugric language, the same group as Finnish or Estonian. This ancient cultural group has their roots to the east of the Ural mountain chain in modern day Russia. It was from there that the Magyars started the first slow migration of the Ugric people around 2000 BC. What path they took and what other groups wielded influence over them is largely unknown. Somewhere east of the Urals they adopted a nomadic lifestyle around 1000 BC due to a changing warmer climate in the region. 500 years later, when the climate turned colder again, they moved south where they made contact with Euro-Iranian people groups. Today, Proto-Iranian loanwords in the Hungarian language are proof of this. Around 500 AD, the Magyar tribes left their ancestral area southeast of the Urals to move west, although it is not known today what spurred this migration. They moved to an area to the north of the Caspian Sea called Magna Hungaria in medieval sources. Historians tend to say that only here did they begin to develop their own ethnic identity. The next archaeological finds date back to the 8th century, when they settled in an area called Leveria, close to the Black Sea. The area was inhabited by the Khazars, a Turkish people group ruled by a Khan to whom the Magyars paid homage. In doing so, they also partially let go of their nomadic way of life. Again, Lowen words from Turk languages are proof of that today. A revolt in a Khazar Khanate around 830 AD in which the Magyars took part forced them to leave the area and move even further west. Many of the revolting Khazars also followed them. They migrated to an area called Etelkurt, the northwest of the Black Sea. Historians say that it was there that they developed an ethnic unity that can be called the Magyars, by mixing their own culture with the local Turks. Even though the area was ideal for their semi-nomadic way of life, they still had to fear attacks from the Khazars. As a result of that, as well as losing wars against other groups, the tribal communities migrated over the Carpathian Mountains into the Pannonian Basin in the years between 894 and 897 AD. It is estimated that around half a million Magyars, as well as other ethnic groups that followed them, crossed the mountains to settle in the basin. 200,000 others of various groups in the basin either fled, were subjugated or joined the Magyars. Here, many factors contributed to their permanent establishment. At first, lying between three realms at war and being only sparsely populated, it was easy to conquer. Then, its strategic location surrounded by mountains made it easy to defend. The conquest of the whole basin took place gradually. From the western hillsides of the Carpathian Mountains to the Danube River and later Lake Balaton as their population center. With that, at the beginning of the 10th century they established their presence in Europe. The next 55 years became known as the Hungarian invasions of Europe. From the Pannonian Basin they started pillaging into Central and Western Europe. 
They attacked on horseback and started quick attacks at range, either already on the way back when defenders can rally or destroying their morale in the open fight. Their first attacks were close to their own domain, into the kingdoms of Bavaria and Great Moravia. Since then, hardly a year passed without the Magyars pillaging some area or another. Just as frequently, the defenders tried to fight the Magyars, but for the most part they couldn't gain a lasting victory. In 905, the Magyars managed to defeat Great Moravia and even pushed into the Saxon territories in today's northern Germany. King Conrad I of East Franca's rule was so weakened by the frequent attacks that he only was able to rule in his own domain within the empire. Over the decades, the Magyars managed to lead all of Europe into living in fear of them, pillaging as far west as the Iberian Peninsula and France, and as far south as modern-day Greece and southern Italy. In the East Franken Empire, which was attacked more often than any other realm by the Magyars, new ideas were developed to fight the invaders. King Heinrich I of East Franca was the first one to forge a plan to deal with the attackers. After a victorious battle, he managed to ransom one of the most important chiefs of the Magyars for a ten year long truce, which he used to fortify his realm, with refuge castles as well as the creation of a rider army. This strategy worked so well that he won a decisive victory later, although he still decided to pay tribute to the Magyars so as to not challenge luck even more. It was his son, Otto the Great of East Francia, who managed to rally all the different opposing German tribes behind him and defeat the Magyars for good. With the battle on the Lechfield in 955, Otto not only won the battle, but ended the whole invasion by killing even the very last fleeing survivors of the battle. More on that historic figure in the next episode of this history video series. For the Magyars, this must have been a traumatic experience. Consequently, they let go of their nomadic way of life and settled down for good. Additional forays into the west did not happen. Their chiefs Jezza and Stephen I Christianized the Magyars and reformed their internal organization. The latter formed the Kingdom of Hungary in the year 1000, starting a completely different story for the people. The Hungarian or Magyar people live on today in the Republic of Hungary in the same area their ancestors settled more than a thousand years ago. I thank you for watching this video. Did you like it? Definitely tell me in the comments. If you did, like the video and subscribe to my channel. Again, the biggest of all thanks to KJ who helped with the creation of the script. Also a huge thanks to my patrons that so greatly support me in working on my channel. That's it for now, the next video again will be City Skylines focused. Until then, stay healthy, stay tuned, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.